I've been doing pixel art for about seven years now, and I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Give me a farmer's sponsorship. I said the line. So what I want to do today is go over two major tips that you can use to help improve your pixel art. I'm Jack Breen, and this is Hybrid Theory. Now keep in mind, like I said, I've been doing this for a while, so these are just some things that took me a while to figure out, and I had to figure this stuff out on my own, so um, I'm going to be talking about two major mistakes that I see beginner pixel artists make, so if you make these mistakes yourself, don't feel bad, because I made them too for a long time, and it took me a while to kind of hone my style and uh, figure out what I was doing on here, so why don't we jump into A-Sprite and talk about what I think are two of the biggest mistakes that beginner pixel artists make. So let's say that I ask you, a pixel artist, to draw me a blue ball. What most beginners will do is they'll draw something that looks like this. Now the reason that this isn't ideal is for two main reasons. Number one, they're using way too many colors, and number two, the colors are all too close together. There's not enough contrast. Now, if you asked me to draw this blue ball using these same colors, I would draw it like this. Now, this still isn't actually the way that I would do it, and we're going to get to that in a minute. That's because of the second thing we're going to talk about. But this, I think, is a, is a better start to the blue ball than what we have here. Let's take a look at them side by side. So, side by side comparison, the, the ball on the left, I think, makes a lot of sense for beginners to pixel art who are coming off of a drawing background, or really any sort of traditional artistic background. You know, if, if you're somebody who's used to pencil drawing or painting, then the one here on the left is going to look familiar to you because that's how you would shade in a sphere with a pencil. So when it comes to pixel art, the biggest thing to remember is that less is more. The smaller your resolution size, the less colors you should be using. And if you take nothing else away from this video, I would say have that be your one takeaway. The smaller your sprites, the less colors you should be using. The reason for that is because when you make these sprites like this, you know, and this ball right here, that first of all, this space is a 32 by 32 canvas. The ball itself is only 18 by 18, so we're, we're not working with a very large picture here. Uh, and the, the bigger that you get, the more colors you can kind of get away with working with. And we can see that in some of these examples here. You look at some of the older NES sprites, and yes, they were working with a limited color palette, but it kind of worked for the size of the sprites because there weren't many pixels to go around. Then when you move up to these bigger sprites from some of the later eras, you're able to get more colors out of the picture because you're working with larger pictures. It's a natural fit for the size of the image. When you have something like this, when it's, you know, a small sphere that you're drawing, and you try to pack a ton of values into that, but you're just working with an 18 by 18, you know, circle, it's just going to end up looking like you took a PNG and kind of smushed it down. It just, it's, it's, a, it's a viable style, you can go for it if it's what you're into, but if you're looking for that kind of traditional, you know, old school, almost cell shaded style, uh, which is, you know, what I tend to work with and what a lot of the indie developers that I, you know, kind of follow and have followed for a long time tend to work with, then you're gonna want to go with uh, this option right here. You're gonna want to do the whole less is more style thing. Alright, so now we've gone from this to this, and we're off to a good start, but there's still something else that I would do if I was the one drawing this sphere, and that leads us to the second most common mistake that uh, beginner pixel artists make that I want to touch upon today. We're going to take the apple test. I want you to look at this apple. You've got 10 seconds to tell me what color this apple is. I know it's a tough question. Try not to pass out. If you need water, go get it. Just make sure you're sitting down. Put your, find, a, find a cool spot near the window. All right, you think you got your answer? It's pretty clear that the apple is red, right? But now I want you to answer, answer riddle me this is what I want you to do. What color is this? Some kind of burnt orange, you know, yellow, whatever, mustard yellow. How about this? Purple, maroon, right? Well, those two colors are in this apple. If we zoom in here and we take the uh, color picker tool, this is our base, the red. The shadow is this purple, and the light is that 
mustard color. So this is not really a red apple, this is a purple, red, and yellow apple. But you still looked at it and saw that it was red, right? So how does that work? It's a big mystery, right? Well, that is the magic of color theory. Now if I asked a beginner pixel artist to color in this same apple, they would probably give me something like this. They would choose their base red, and then they would just come right here down on the color picker. They would choose something darker for the shadow, and then they would choose something lighter for the light. And here you go. And there's nothing wrong with this. This this apple looks fine. But in my opinion, this option has a lot more pop to it. And like I was saying before, when you're working with these small resolutions, you should be working with less colors. The less colors that you have, the more you need to make use of those colors. So if I were to break down color theory into the, the most simple chart that I can, it would be this chart. Basically, obviously, the darkest color that you have is black, and the lightest color that you have is white. But on the color spectrum, the lightest or warmest color that you have is yellow, and the coldest or darkest color that you have is purple. So essentially the way that color theory works when it comes to shading is that your lighter colors are going to want to bend more towards yellow, while your darker colors should bend more towards purple. So I'm going to show you what that means by hopping back over to our blue ball and applying this logic to the shading on that sprite. So let's remember we started here, we ended up here, so if it were me, I would take this blue, and this is our starting blue, this is our middle shade, and I think that's a fine color to work with, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If I will say one more thing about colors, see this? This, this shit right here, you see this? None of this, don't ever, and I don't care which one of these things you're on, never ever in the world ever put your thing in this corner. If you want your game to look like default Microsoft Paint, then go ahead, that's fine, but what I like to do is keep my colors in this sort of curve here, or really anywhere else that isn't that top corner. Uh, this curve right here is the the happy art curve. That's what we'll call it. I'll, I'll patent it, I'll get it trademarked, and we can start making merch. Just don't put your thing in the corner, okay? All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's come back. So our middle shade right here is fine. We're, we're in the happy curve zone, so that's good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our dark color and to do that, we're going to move the color itself down a bit, so here should be fine, we might tweak it a bit, but we're also going to move the spectrum closer to purple. Not all the way, we don't have to go too crazy or too far, we just want to kind of move in a bit. I mean, the more that you do it, the more of that contrast effect that you'll get, so again, art is subjective, so feel free to play with it and work with it to your heart's content. I'm just going to go right here and uh, pick one of these kind of purples in here. Gonna get more of like a pastel look. And I think I, I like this. So now I need a lighter color, so to make, so to get lighter we would move up here, but again, now we want to move towards yellow. So I'm not gonna go all the way towards yellow, I'm just gonna go kind of one major color group over. So we're in the blue, now we want to be in the teal or light blue, whatever you want to call it. So we end up over here. You throw that in, you've got a spectrum that looks like that, and right away, there you go. Ultimately, I just think that this has a lot more pop to it. You've got, you know, three very different colors in here, but they all work together to make something that is cohesive. Then what we can do, all right, you ready for this one? Then what we can do, you throw some of this on there, okay. This is just a quick tip from Uncle Jack. He can thank me later. All right, and look at that. Oof. Some rim lighting on there? You got a nice looking ball. I'll say that. And if we take a look at some other colors here, we can see the same principles apply. We take a normal looking green. For the shadow, it bends more. Watch how the spectrum changes. It starts there, and then it moves close to the blue. And for our light color, starts in the green and then it shifts closer into the yellow you have kind of more like a lime green for the lighting on this moving into the yellow so obviously this is kind of a conundrum it's okay well if you're in the yellow how do you get any brighter than that well you can always just use white for the light spot on your yellow objects so this right here would be my example of a metal uh, sphere and I want to show you how I pick out my grayscales because it essentially applies to that same yellow versus purple logic uh, if we were to start another one of these, 
So most people, when they do grayscale in their games, and why don't we add a background just so that we can actually see what we're working with here, because the background's already gray. So most people, when they're working with grayscales, they're going to pick these colors in here. They're going to slide it all the way over to the left, and obviously that's about as gray as you can get, so there's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you really want to make it look just a bit more interesting, and again, if you want it to kind of pop and have that vibrancy, what I like to do is the lighter shades of gray I pick kind of somewhere in this range right here. So the lighter shades of gray will be shifted towards yellow and they'll just have like a hint of yellow in them. Uh, so obviously we can start with white, that's going to be on our grayscale, that's going to be our lightest shade, and we can have black be our darkest. So if we were going to pick three that went in between white and black, I would have a light gray that is shifted into yellow. I would have a dark gray that would be a little bit shifted towards purple and again it's very subtle you know we're not doing anything crazy and then we'll have one in the middle which is just gonna be in the middle of the whole spectrum I guess we'll kind of pick this area right here and that'll give us like a really nice kind of cobalt look to it and so right away you can see this is a metallic spectrum but it, it's got just that really awesome kind of pastel look to it, and there there's a lot of color going on, even though it should just be black to white. So if we were going to apply this to our ball, and let's say we want to make like a metal ball, we could fill this in, do some of this, then I'll pick uh, I'll pick this one, have this in here, and then we'll just use pure white for the shine, and. Yeah, that's looking like it could be from some armor or some sort of machine or something. So when it's all said and done, you should have some pretty interesting sprites that kind of pop a bit more than what we had before, which was this, which, you know, again, I see a lot of beginners do this. It's some, it's You can do it, it's possible, but, you know, I just think having that contrast is really going to help you guys out a lot. And again, remember, less is more. Alright guys, I think that pretty much sums up what I wanted to talk about. This was meant to be a pretty short video. Uh, I am planning on another episode where I actually go through color palette creation, so keep an eye out for that one. But uh, until then, I just want to give a quick shout out to our awesome, super supportive patrons. Love you guys so much. If you want to see more of my personal pixel art, I'm making a game full of it. It's called Gigasword, and it's about a boy who wields a ginormous sword that weighs him down. We've got a Discord server up that you can follow if you want to stay updated, and there's a demo on itch.io that you can also play. But I think I've said my piece, so I hope you guys learned something today. I hope that these tips help you out. If you have any questions about pixel art or anything game-related in general, always be sure to leave a comment below. I'll see you guys next time, and take care.